lot of people think mobile is just tablets and phones and, and netbooks and things like that, but actually the most mobile consumer device on the planet is actually your automobile. And you, what you're gonna find is cars are becoming more and more connected. You know, when I'm in my car, I want my GPS, I want navigation, I wanna be able to access information of where I'm going right away. Uh, what about things like driver assist or safety is really important. A lot of people don't know, but the connected car really has been around for quite some time. I went back and, and looked at really how long it's been connected. And uh, for more than 25 years, the car has been connected. So people probably don't know about this, but there's a lot of networks inside of the car, more than 10 in many cases inside of one car. So the idea is how do we make the car a more enjoyable experience, but also a safer experience. So what you're gonna see us do is add things like cameras and image processing. So today, you, everyone has like a backup camera, but imagine if you have a camera covering all the blind spots so that you never run over any object with your backing or parking or things like that. Uh, things that if you're, the driver is falling asleep, maybe there's a camera in the front that immediately sounds an alarm if he sees the driver snoozing. You know, things that are gonna, you know, we take for granted as, you know, easy things to do, they're gonna take a lot of computing power to do that and do it in real time. The newest uh, buses that people are talking about is actually Ethernet inside of the car. And uh, I think it's Broadcom who's actually out there talking about can you put Ethernet in the car. And the car makers have put together a consortium. The consortium is called Open. Um, if you go on the internet, I'm sure you can find it. Uh, it's talking about how to use the Ethernet system inside of the car. And uh, what this will allow is much higher data rates for the features of the future of cars. You know, we're talking beyond 2015 into 2020 if you want to have driver assist systems and eventually uh, the ability to maybe do autonomous driving, um, you're going to need high-speed data networks inside of the car even faster than today. To do all these things, you need to do it in real time. You can't say, okay, well, it's like software, so I'm going to scan the person's face, I then process it for 45 seconds, and then I give you the answer back. By that time, the driver has fallen asleep and already ran off the side of the road into a ditch. So they need instantaneous feedback, so they need very, very good performance. But believe it or not, they also need power efficiency. It sounds like, well, wow, it's a big car, but actually the more power you take, the more it hurts your miles per gallon. I mean, they're really thinking a lot about power efficiency. So we have to make sure, and that's why Tegra is the, the solution we're pushing into that market, because the same kind of power efficiency that customers are asking us for in phones and tablets, we're being asked for in automobiles. Are they starting to put cameras around the car? and these cameras will be connected on the, on the data networks to pass video uh, signals back and forth inside of the car. Um, those, those signals get processed then for uh, you know, doing things like um, detecting if there's a collision and, and things like this. So that's, that's really uh, some of the new stuff that, that's being looked at right now for cars beyond 2015, for example. We have to do a higher level of testing because you can imagine in an automobile, you cannot have a failure. You know, people might put up with once in a while having to reboot their phone, reboot their tablet. You're not going to put up with having to reboot your car, right? So you have to do a higher level of testing when you're certifying these products when they go into a car.